Uh, hi, thanks for everybody for coming today. My name is John McKellick. I'm one of the members here at the Assembly Space. And I'm the adopted owner of the Formex 66, uh, 660 vacuum former. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. So when you walk up to the machine, it's going to be like this. It's plugged in, powered, it's ready to run. One of the first things you want to do, check the top of this heating element. This is the element that's going to heat your plastic. What you're going to try to do is you're going to try to get your hard plastic soft and pliable. You want to change the plastic's shape depending on the type of mold you want to form. So when you walk up to the machine, assume, assume it's hot. There's a lot of members here, they're going to be using the equipment. Assume it's hot. You're going to see this power light on and all these zone indicators for the heating element will be off. But walk up, you know, keep your hand high above. If you were to come up here now, you'd feel it's warm. So you know it's been hot. So take care. The reason you want to check that, you want to make sure there's nothing on top of the heating element. No dust, no material, nobody's left their tools because they will melt and burn. During the forming process, you're going to pull this heating element across a sheet of plastic that you inserted in the holder. But I'm pulling it now too because I want to check to make sure nothing was left on the table. So I can see that it's clear. I wiped it earlier of dust. If there's dust on the equipment, you're going to get a smell like from a furnace when you first fire it up just before winter time. So, top is clear, table is clear. I'm going to test out the traveling, uh, the rack. I can see that it's moving clearly, smoothly. So, I know we're good to go. The model I'm going to form today has a problem with it. And the reason we're going to use it is, you know, to show you what can happen. This is a plaster uh, mold. It's uh, something painters use to study the planes of the human head. I, I study painting as well, and I had this lying around, and it's also a nice material that you can use in the vacuum former. When it comes to material in the vacuum former, you want something that can survive both temperature and pressure. You don't want to put anything soft in the vacuum former because you are creating a vacuum in the space that the object's going to sit in. So if you tried, say, uh, uh, vegetables or a, a, a raw egg, it'll crush because of the atmospheric pressure. This nice, hard, made of plaster, it's a nice mold to use for the vacuum former. But if you look closely at it, you're going to see that there's these undercuts in the shape. That's what you're going to want to look, look out for when you create your own molds. You don't want these undercuts happening. Because what will happen is, when we run this, you're going to see the plastic suck down and it's going to suck down hard. And it's going to follow the contour of my object. But once it slides underneath these undercuts, it's going to be locked in the plastic. So for the demo today, we're going to do that so you can see what happens. So you have your object, you have your vacuum former. You're going to want to place your object about center of the pad. In this case, we have, uh, it's 26 by 26, but the actual vacuum, for, uh, the forming area is uh, about 24 by 24. And the reason for the added length is you want your plastic sitting on this rubber gasket that's going to form the seal around which the uh, allow the vacuum former to suck down on. So we're good. My piece is sitting in the middle. I'm going to lower the table. I'm going to take my sheet of, in this case, bought some polystyrene, 1.5 millimeter. If you go to the Assentworks website, for all of our equipment, we have uh, instructions about what type of materials to use on the various equipment. For the vacuum former, I listed the various types of plastics, thicknesses available, and the forming temp. So for a sheet of polystyrene like this, I'm going to want the 
heating element to be about 150 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit Celsius, oh, I never convert those two right. So 150 degrees Fahrenheit. You're also going to want to heat it, no. You're also going to want to keep it clear of dust. Shoot. Uh, for about 45 seconds. You just want it malleable. You don't want to melt it. And as you try your own projects, you're going to find that you're going to have to take a couple of pieces and find the right heating temperature as well as right time. So, I will put my plastic in, take off the dust, and the reason you want to be uh, very, very cautious of the dust is that uh, you'll, you'll, you're able to achieve uh, an incredible fidelity to reproduce your model. So even if you have an imperfection on your model, like dust, it will reproduce in the plastic once it forms. So, the plastic is in, it's covered the uh, rubber gasket and around the perimeter. Bring the handle down, lock it in place. Now you can set the temperatures, making sure that the, the pad is back away from the plastic. Now if you look on the vacuum former, you're going to see five zones. These are the various uh, heating elements on the area of the heater. So you got zone one, which is dead center. And when it comes to this, the heating element, the heat will concentrate towards the center of your material. So when it comes to setting the temperatures, you can actually set the center part down a little bit further than what you would uh, around the perimeter, because it'll hold the heat more. And you don't want to be concentrating all the heat in the center or you'll get a burn spot. So, We've kind of pre-marked on here uh, the various settings for the, the different zones. Uh, set that. Yeah, okay. Notice the lights came on. This is the heating element starting to warm up. There's a nice temperature probe that's by the machine so you can uh, <coughs> confirm what temperature it actually is. So what I'll do is, I'll let it heat. Once it's reached its temperature, the light will go out, and it'll cycle, so it'll come back on and cycle. Once they've all cycled, I can check the temperature by going to the pad and back. I'm gonna do this quickly, so I'm gonna clear this. So right now, the temperature of the pad in the middle is about 124 degrees F. I want to get that about 150, and then once it's at 150, I'm gonna pull the heating pad across the plastic and hold for 45 seconds. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the heater across the plastic, start my stopwatch, and at 45 seconds, I'm gonna push the heater away. Plastic will be pliable. I'm gonna draw on the lever, forcing my mold up into the hot plastic. You'll see the you'll see the figure tape shape in the surface. Then the fun part begins. I'm going to hit this mold button. It's going to start sucking out the air and drawing the plastic around my mold. I'll let it sit for a few seconds. Draw the air flat. We'll actually see the surface of that traveling cart that I moved down form in the material. So once we see that, we know we have the right vacuum. And we're done, and we can hit the release button. I'm going to move the lever back. Okay, so I'm going to drop it across, start my timer, and as soon as my timer hits 45 seconds, I'll move it back off. Okay, 45 seconds. It looks nice and soft. Bring it up. That's good. Suck the air out. Now what the release button does is it forces the air in. Now if I had done it right with my model, as I'm forcing the air in and lowering, my, my mold would have traveled down as well. But right now, my mold is captured in the plastic. That's what, that's what the undercuts did. So you're going to want to avoid undercuts in your own model.
and release. And model mold is captured. Actually, could come up. But actually, on this one, we didn't get any. Uh, uh, what can happen is, as it's forming and the plastic is being drawn taut, you could get uh, tears and ridges forming. But this one didn't. Give yeah. myself a nice sharp tip. the vacuum former. When you're done, make sure the uh, heating element is off, that the area is as clean as you found it, if not cleaner. That's pretty much it. Right. Woohoo! <laughs>